Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more, well, and for to make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. He had just lost his wife. His children could not believe how he reacted. There is a connection that cannot be seen but can be felt. It is something that goes far beyond a document, a word. That connection is love, true love. But this connection does not exist out of nowhere. It is built based on feelings that we cannot see, but that we can feel. This connection is love that suffers everything, waits for everything, endures everything. But all things must pass and be forgotten. But if there is real and true love, it will never be extinguished. My parents met worked and studied together. Under those circumstances, they fell in love, lived 55 years married. One morning, my mom came down the stairs to make breakfast for dad. When she suddenly had a heart attack and fell, my father lifted her up as best he could. I was at the bottom of the stairs, looking at the whole scene. Then, I saw my father draw strength as if it were the last thing he would do, and he almost dragged her into his truck. It all happened so fast. It had been yesterday when mom and dad had been watching a movie together after dinner. I had said goodbye as usual, but when I arrived today, I had found the sad reality. I was talking to my father, but he did not answer me. Dad, I told him, beckoning him, that I would go right now, that I would follow him because he didn't give me the opportunity to get into his truck when he sped off without respecting the traffic lights. The police... Seeing his truck at full speed, tried to stop him and followed him to the hospital. I arrived when the police were trying to speak with him. He simply ignored them or paid them attention. He threw the keys at the policeman's feet and pulled mom out of the truck. He didn't even wait for the stretcher to arrive. The nurses met him in the hospital hallway. Help me, he said in his voice almost breathless and started crying like a child. I walked quickly, and when I caught up with him, I found him. He was sitting and exhausted on the floor next to the emergency door through which Mom had entered. And all the time I knew my father, I had never seen him cry like that, not even when my older brother had an accident. He was the one who always transmitted calm to us, hugged us, and spoke to us to reassure us. He had always been calm in any of these circumstances, however extreme they were. I did not know what to do or what to say. Seeing him, I tried to gather strength to comfort him, but he broke to the point of fading. I couldn't take it anymore and started crying with him. My older brother, who was the most sensitive of all, grew strong and tried to calm us down. I tried to calm down, but Dad was sitting on the floor, crying like a child. There was no way to ease his pain. He already knew that Mom had died in his arms, as he was a retired doctor and probably followed his vital signs along the way. He had only asked to be resuscitated with the electroshock. That was his only hope, but sadness ensued. When leaving, the doctors only certified that mom had already died of a heart attack. But how was it possible? I wondered if such a strong man broke to such a degree. I never thought dad would ever feel like this. I was extremely shocked. I knew that my mother had really been part of her being and she was gone. During the burial, my father did not speak to anyone. His gaze was lost. He hardly said a single word. Everyone came to offer their condolences, to which he only nodded. That night, his children met him in an atmosphere of pain and nostalgia, remembering the beautiful anecdotes. And he asked my brother, who was a theologian, to tell him where mom would be at that time. He seemed to be seeking some kind of comfort. My brother began to talk about life after death and the conjectures of how and where mom would be. My father listened very carefully. Suddenly, he asked us to take him to the cemetery. Dad, we answered. It's eleven at night. We cannot go to the cemetery. They, they won't let us in. He yelled on us energetically and with a glassy look said, Don't argue with me, please. Don't argue with the man who just lost his wife after 55 years. My partner. She was my strength. And as you see, I don't have it now. There was a respectful moment of silence. We don't argue anymore. 
We went to the cemetery. We asked the watchman for permission. With a flashlight, we made it to my mother's grave. My father stroked and prayed and told his children who were watching the scene moved. It was 55 years, you know? No one can speak of true love if they have no idea what it is to share life with a woman as your mother was. He paused and wiped away her tears. She and I were together in the crisis when I had no money. I changed jobs. We packed our bags when we sold the house and moved out of town. I was with her when she was scared with her first pregnancy. That is something indelible in my memory. We share the joy of seeing all of you finish your careers. We cry side by side the departure of loved ones. I never imagined myself in a scene like this. We always used to pray together in the waiting room of some hospitals. When any of our family members or you became ill, we relied on pain. We really were a team. Every year we hugged each other at Christmas and forgave our mistakes. Children, now it's gone and I'm only comforted by something. You know what? That she left before me. She did not have to live with the agony and pain of finding out, of being alone after my departure. I will be the one to go through that, and I thank God that it was so. I have loved her, and I love her so much that I would not have liked to see her that she suffered as I am suffering now. When my father finished speaking, my brothers and I had tears streaming down our faces. We hugged him and he comforted us all. Everything will be fine, he said. We can go home. It's been a good day. That night, I understood something very important about what true love is. It is far from romanticism. It has nothing to do with eroticism or sex, flowers, chocolates, or gifts. In reality, these fail to describe what loyalty is and what it is to love someone in this life, to love them as yourself, which means respect and loyalty, and everything is linked to work and that we are a complement. Thus, caring for each other and above all, caring for true love. Love professed by two really committed people. Love like the one our Savior Jesus Christ taught us. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.